what the enemy meant for evil god will make it for your good hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome thank you for joining this channel if you've been here welcome as well i really do appreciate it today just quickly i wanted to share with you how sometimes when the enemy tries to con or tries to plan your demise only to plan something that was going to destroy him or her so um as an example i was thinking about how mordecai uh, was refusing to bow down to haman because haman wanted people to worship him so in the book of esther we learn of a person called mordecai who is esther's cousin mordecai takes in esther after esther's cousin i mean esther's parents are killed during king nebuchadnezzar's reign in Babel, in uh, jerusalem so he almost adopts Esther into his uh, home or his house and then he gets to live there and then later on he prepares Esther to be queen and then Esther becomes Queen Esther and Esther is not even her name she has another name which is a Jew's name so nobody knows that she's a Jew and she gets married to the king blah 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 so Haman is the guy who looks after the king's estates and he's like a leader of some sort and he wants people to bow down to him. Mordecai refused to bow down to him and then Haman loses his head and now he wants um, to issue a decree to the king or get the king's approval for the decree to be signed and then to kill the Jews. So we all know of the famous fast by Queen Esther. Esther obviously is, in, is perplexed, is, is, is moved by Mordecai's wishes, uh, I mean distraught nature when she hears of this uh, decree and then Mordecai says you need to do something about this, you need to do something about this and then she requests a fast and everybody fast and then the events after that start happening. So the reason why I want to share this, especially for people who are very younger, like teenagers, varsity, high school, early young adults, do not be tempted to follow the crowd, especially if the crowd is not where God is leading you. And uh, especially also if the crowd is going against the will of God. So Mordecai was a devout Jew and he was very committed to his work in the palace. He had this guy who was almost like a manager or like a boss, whatever. Yeah, he was like a chief of something. And um, he was asking people to bow down to him every time. Let's say we go into the office, I need you to bow down to me, bow down to me. And Haman was like, I ain't doing that. The only person I bow down to, obviously, is God. So another fact is that in the book of Esther, God is not even mentioned once, but God is visible throughout the entire book. So. He then tries to plan for obviously the Jews to be killed based on his anger towards uh, Mordecai and then Mordecai is distraught and then he gets Esther to and gets Esther to help uh, him and the rest of the Jews not to be killed because of this decree. So the thing that made me laugh and also just made me think about the importance of not buying down and obviously there is the the the, the, um, the level in which what happened to Haman because of what he did to Mordecai was um, was a bit too much and uh, obviously it's not maybe um, what's the word maybe it's not for this age or this era that we are in but in them in them in, in Esther issuing a fast for everybody to 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 fast and to help her obviously uh, reach out to the king so they can get this decree nullified so there's power in 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 corporate fasting there's power in 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 making sure that you do not touch god's children especially if you know who you are there's power in also not bowing or following the masses so as much as Mordecai was seen as an outcast, he refused to 
about any actually everybody even when you read the book of daniel the three hebrew boys daniel everybody refused to bow down because you basically say that person is bigger than god okay so i was laughing because if you read in chapter six <laughs> haman obviously now he's very look at me I, I got the king to issue a decree these guys are gonna get killed Haman's gonna see what's heading to him blah 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 and then obviously he's sitting down with his friends and his wife and they start thinking what can we do to get rid of this Haman and then everybody's like oh maybe and then he's, I think his wife is like why don't you maybe like build a pole you know and then you're gonna put Haman in the pole and kill Haman in the pole so in chapter 6 it says that um, what does she say what did he say yeah in chapter 6 verse 14 so Haman's wife Zeresh and all his friends suggested set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall and in the morning ask, ask the king to impale Mordecai on it when this is done you can go on your merry way to the banquet with the king this please Haman so the banquet was the banquet that Esther had requested to the king um, post the fast and she was about to approach the king to ask the king not to kill to dismantle this uh, decree so just to fast track so because God is very mysterious his ways are higher than our ways while the king is sleeping following chapter 6 he then dreams of a dream of uh, the time when Mordecai actually saved him back in chapter 4 chapter 3 and uh he he thinks to himself i wonder what we what, i wonder what we did for mordecai the guy that saved me i wonder what we did for him so when he wakes up he gets all his men he's like whatever happened to that guy mordecai what did we actually do for him did we actually give him something to thank him and everybody's like no we didn't we didn't we didn't so it goes to show how sometimes god will actually plant some uh, plant you in somebody else's dream to bless you even when that person is not even sure why I'm even thinking of it person why am I even doing this it's all in God because God because God orders our steps uh, sometimes uh, somebody will will tell you to meet up with someone that will help you grow your business or your your next uh, breakthrough whatever breakthrough you're trusting God for you'll get get people people think they are the orchestras of, of, of their plans but God actually we may order our plans but God actually establishes them so in this dream obviously he wakes up and he's like we need to do something for Mordecai and thank him and then he then calls Mordecai he then calls Haman and says Haman you need to make sure that you give this to Mordecai give him like the best things the gold and royal robes and horses and water 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 and then um <laughs> and then Haman Haman was like what the hell I was about to ask you if you could put Mordecai in a sharpened pole and clearly that sharpened pole didn't work it didn't happen for him and then uh, I love this part where he says uh, so Haman took the robes so in verse 11 so Haman is not the one going to give the robes to Uh Mordecai so now imagine somebody giving somebody that doesn't like you giving you something that um that is very I don't know valuable and because of the, the authorities they have to give it to you because this is what I've been told to do so here he says so Haman took the robes and put them on Mordecai placed placed him on the king's own horse and led him through the city square shouting this is what the king does for someone who wishes to honor him afterward Mordecai uh, returned to the palace gate but Haman hurried home dejected and completely humiliated Whew. and then um, just to summarize the scripture reading and then when Queen Esther obviously has the, the dinner or the banquet with the king and Haman, and then she starts telling all, and basically she rats um, Haman out to the king. And the king's like, who would want to kill my my love? My, my, who would ever want to touch you? So uh, it's also kind of crazy how the, the king always forgets the decrees that they issue. But anyway, I also see that in the, the book of uh, Daniel, somehow they're just always surprised about the decrees meanwhile they have to sign it off so anyway in chapter 7 the king obviously gets mad 
that someone wants to touch Esther. So that alone, remember, if you read the book uh, in chapter 4, nobody is allowed to go to the king unless the king calls for them. So when Esther took the risk of approaching the king, she was taking the risk out of faith that God was already with her. So when she approached it to the king, the king was actually very happy to see her. And the king was like, what can I do for you? Whatever you want. And then the first time she says, I want to have a dinner. And then the second time when they do have a dinner, then she tells the king, this is what's going on. You have issued as a decree that's been issued to kill the Jews and uh, blah, blah, blah. And the king is like, who would want to kill the Jews, blah, blah, blah. And then um, Queen Esther's like, that guy, Haman, Haman, your guy wants to kill us. So the king is like, oh, no, 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 no. So the king says in chapter, guys, I'm rushing this. The king says, um, we, will he even assault the queen right here in the palace before my very own eyes? So obviously he's obviously being very dramatic now because obviously he's obviously here for the barricade. But now he's saying, is he actually here to insult you? And then as soon as the king spoke, his attendants covered Haman's face and signaling, signaling, signaling his doom. So this is in verse 9, chapter 7. So one of the king's uh, people who obviously looked after him said, Haman had set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall in his own courtyard. He intended it to use it to empower Mordecai, the man who had saved the king from assassination. Then empower, then, then empower Haman on it, the king declared. So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai and the king's anger subsided. I was laughing because maybe it's not even tying to my topic or what I'm trying to say, but um, there's, there, there's a promise uh, laid out for us if we do not fall. Um, it's not as to this extent, but just in everyday living, God does blesses the one who honors the one who doesn't fold. So I was laughing because Haman had built a sharpened pole to kill Mordecai, and the same sharpened pole that he had orchestrated for Mordecai was the pole that he got killed on. So, what the enemy meant for evil. God will make it for your good. So um, read the book of Esther, see Mordecai's countenance and his character and how he just doesn't want to bow down. And uh, even with the, um, the decree of the Jews being killed, he's still not, um, uh, obviously he's destroyed, but the favor of God is upon him and the people of the Jews because he refused to bow down. So even when the king completely forgot that Mordecai had saved him, he remembers that he did through a dream, which could only have been God because why all of a sudden you would dream about me after like two or three years after the actual event. So sometimes God will place you in somebody's heart or dream to honor you because of your obedience. So young people, continue to just trust in the Lord because Lord looks at your your countenance, he looks at your faith, he looks at your 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 your, your dreams. While other people are maybe uh, making fun of you and they're not wishing well upon you, just trust that God is there to honor you if you keep the faith. So I hope you guys have an awesome day, and I hope this makes sense. I'm try, try to make it sense, but. Um, yeah, just live in the, 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 the rest that God has given you. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye.